Do you want to prompt faster in mid-journey? Is generation time slowing down your productivity? Midjourney dropped some cool new tools in April 2023, and they didn't make a big fuss about it. These tools might just be the ticket to crank up your productivity. I usually show you these tools in a short video, and I did make one about the repeat tool, but it took me a beat to get the hang of the permutations tool, so we're going to do a whole video on these tools. Dash dash repeat is a new parameter that hangs out with stylize and chaos. Just type dash dash repeat after your prompt and pick a number from 2 to 10. Repeat is like a photocopier. Midjourney will roll your prompt 2 times or 10 times, giving you up to 40 different images. But unlike a photocopier, each of these generations is unique. Repeat is perfect when you want a large selection of images to choose from. I was making a coloring book the other day and I needed 40 images on a theme. Just one prompt, just one, and boom, I had all the images I needed. Crank up the chaos value and you may get some wild variations. And you can even add repeat during variations to get more than four choices. The repeat parameter was initially only for pro users on fast hours, but Midjourney has since chilled a bit. Go wild and run as many images as you want on a single prompt. Permutations is another super helpful tool that came out at the same time as repeat. It's not a parameter, so you won't be using the dash dash at the end of your prompt. Instead, you'll be using these funky bracket keys. In a way, permutations is a souped up version of repeat. Say you want a dog in the style of, oh, Tim Burton, and then a cat. Instead of typing two different prompts, you'll type cat and dog and put them in brackets, separated by a comma. Midjourney will generate two prompts, one with dog and one with cat. But why stop at two? Go for three or four. You can run 40 different images at a time, enough to populate an entire zoo. And permutations are not just for your prompt. They work with parameters too. While testing version five in Midjourney, I've been running my prompts through both version four and version five to see what the difference is. Instead of running two different prompts, I use the permutation V4 comma V5. You can even add Niji in there to see what the anime version does. And if you're into the style command and wanna know which you like best, type S0, S500, and S1000. Midjourney will run three different versions of your prompt with different stylized values, or maybe different aspect ratios. And even try your favorite combinations. Permutations also worked with image prompts. Want to see which image has the most impact on your prompt? We'll run all of them. and add variable image weights to fine-tune the results. And while we're talking about weights, you can use permutations with multi-prompts as well. So in one prompt, you can gradually increase the weight of a feature or a style, and this gives you a range of options. Permutations are separated by commas, dog, comma, cat. Things get a little more complicated if you separate a list that already includes commas. Maybe one image you want has soft lighting, fantasy art, and is dreamlike. The other is a photograph with volumetric lighting and is realistic. If we put all of these combinations in the brackets, Midjourney will think you want six different images. We have to change the commas inside of each permutation to a forward slash. This leaves only one comma separating the two parts of the permutation. But this isn't what turned my brain inside out with permutations. It's that you can stack permutations and nest them. So you can run dog comma cat and version four comma version five and Midjourney will run four different prompts, two subjects, two parameters. 
And with three choices, Midjourney runs even more. Three subjects, three parameters, that's nine generations or 36 images. Or what about three images and three image weights? So you can see why Midjourney asks you to confirm your choices before running the prompts. It's easy to go wild with permutations. You can have more than one permutation in a prompt, but you can also nest permutations. That's putting one permutation inside of another. Say we want some food photography, dinner and dessert. I'm gonna make an image for a pizza and one for an ice cream sundae but I haven't really decided on what kind of pizza I want or what kind of ice cream I want. So I'm gonna construct a prompt that has two different kinds of pizza and two different kinds of ice cream. We nest the smaller parameters inside of the larger parameter. Pizza, ice cream sundae is the major parameter. Vegetable pineapple is a smaller parameter next to pizza and chocolate strawberry is the parameter next to ice cream sundae. Make sure you close all of the brackets. How many images will this prompt make? Well, two pizzas and two different ice cream sundaes will make four different prompts. Permutations let you play around with different parts of your prompt or parameters you may not have thought of before. You might stumble upon some seriously cool and unexpected combinations that can spark fresh creative ideas. A couple of dashes and a couple of brackets, these new tools can seriously save you a ton of time and effort, especially when you're working on bigger projects. With just a few little adjustments to your prompt, you'll be able to turn out heaps of unique images in no time. These tools are a real game changer for all you designers, artists, and content creators out there. Let us know how you're using the repeat and permutation tools in the comments below. If this video was helpful, remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel. This is Janet making the photo. Let's make something amazing together.